Shalom. This is Yair Davili from Britain. Movement of the Ten Tribes of Israel. We believe that the Ten Tribes are now to be found amongst Western peoples. Today we are going to study the blessings and the life story, both in its actual circumstance and in, in its symbolic importance concerning the forefather Jacob. The forefathers of the Israelite nation were Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob is also known as Israel. Jacob was renamed Israel. And the twelve sons of Israel became the twelve tribes. From the twelve tribes to send all the present Israelites. Out of these twelve tribes, there emerged a great kingdom that ruled over a good portion of the Middle East, known as the Kingdom of Israel. This Kingdom of Israel was ruled over by King David and King Solomon. After the death of King Solomon, the, the kingdom split into two different sections. The northern section, which that comprised the majority of the Israelite nation, was also known as the Kingdom of Israel. That remained separate from the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was centered around Jerusalem, was known as the Kingdom of Judah. And it was ruled over by descendants of the house of David. The northern kingdom was not. The northern kingdom was originally ruled over by Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, from the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim being a sub-tribe of Joseph. This northern kingdom that comprised the majority of the Israelite nation was conquered by the Assyrians and all of its inhabitants were taken away, transferred, ported to different portions of the Assyrian Empire. And there they lost their identity. They became known as the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. We hold and that we have proven, and you may see it on our website and in our literature, that the Lost Ten Tribes today are now to be found amongst Western peoples, including the British Isles and offshoots of the British Isles in North America, Australia, New Zealand and also including portions of Western Europe in general. That is where the Lost Ten Tribes are to be found, that is where they are concentrated, that is where the Bible says they are. We may prove this both from the Bible, from rabbinical commentary and uh, supplement it from secular sources that affirm, confirm and add to our overall body of evidence. Part of the evidence that we uh, refer to is from the Bible. The Bible is the main source that we base our beliefs upon, even though we supplement or we complement or we enhance, we enhance our understanding of the Bible from other sources. Nevertheless, the Bible remains the foundation of our belief, and the Bible justifies what we believe in because the Bible says it as it is. The Bible tells us where the lost in tribes are today. Now, part of the biblical proofs concern blessings. The blessings given to the forefathers that were to be filled in their sons, that were to be filled at least in part through the ten tribes in their places of exile. And um, some of the most important of these uh, blessings were given to Jacob. We had Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They were the forefathers. In the separate talks we've already spoken of the blessings to Abraham and shown how they were fulfilled amongst Western nations. Now Abraham was to become a great and mighty nation and through whom all peoples of the earth were to be blessed. And how that Isaac received these blessings and uh, exemplified them and so to Jacob too received blessings and through his seed was the uh, blessings given to Israel to be fulfilled and they have been fulfilled in Western peoples. Jacob was actually a twin. He was the twin brother to Esau. Esau and Jacob were born from the same mother, were born from Rebecca, and they were born on the one and the same day, almost at the very same time. Before they were born, whilst their mother Rebecca, Rivka and Hebrew, was still pregnant with them, she felt the struggling, she felt the children inside her fighting, struggling, uh, wrestling with each other. So she went and she asked from a, a prophet, as to uh, as for an explanation as to what was happening, she was told that two nations within her were within her womb, and one would serve the other. And uh, this indeed is what happened in history, because we know that from Esau, Esau is also known as Edom, descended um, the people of Rome, the forefathers of the Roman nation, or at least a good portion of the elite early settlers of Rome. Also, some of the Germanic peoples, but not all of them, a portion of the Germanic peoples and of the German aristocracy and of German adventurers and warriors were descended from Edom. 
And indeed, Edom was a blessed that he should live by the sword, he should have warrior characteristics, he should uh, exemplify the leader principle, and that he should be blessed with great wealth and bounty, and that is what happened to the children of Edom. Also we find um, Edomites in other portions of, of Europe, amongst the Russians, amongst different uh, European nations, as well as amongst the Germans. And even amongst Israelite nations we find Edomites, especially amongst those so-called identity freaks and conspiracy people who try and uh, say bad things about the Jewish people who, who are anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish. Some of them too are descended from Edomites and they are merely giving vent to the inherent fraternal jealousy of their brother, of the Israelite brother of Judah. They also incidentally frequently hate Joseph, they hate the Anglo-Saxons because they instinctively recognize that the so-called English-speaking peoples, Anglo-Saxon peoples and the Jewish peoples are, are brothers, they're one of the same nation and that they have a mutual destiny together and it does not include Edom in that destiny because Esau, Edom, was excluded. Uh, when Re Rebecca went to request to inquire of the prophet as to the explanation of these two twins that were struggling within her womb, she was told that uh, two nations are in your womb, two men of people shall be separated from, from within inside you, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. That is how it is translated more or less in English. The expression, the elder shall serve the younger, Rabia Abu Tzayir in Hebrew, in the Hebrew grammatical construct can actually be not so positive. It can mean that, that, that at times the elder shall serve the younger and other times the younger shall serve the elder. And there will be a constant struggle and up and down balance or, in a, or attempt at balancing between these two entities, between these two polar forces and that at one time one would have gain the, gain the ascendancy and another time the other one would. That is how the Bible says it and that is what happens in history. Even though we are told that in the end times, see uh, for instance the book of Abadjah that speaks about an end time struggle between the descendants of, of Jacob, of uh, Joseph the son of Jacob against Edom and how eventually Joseph will destroy, defeat utterly the forces of Edom. But that is for the end times. We are now concerned with prophecies that uh, tell us or confirm to us who the Lost End Tribes are. And these two, two sons, the two sons who were born, the two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau, they were born and they grew and uh, Jacob revealed himself as a plain man who dwelt in tents in the Torah at Ishtam, a simple person. And uh, he was uh, more inclined towards introspection and learning, whereas Esau was a man of the field, a hunter, an outgoing person. And their father Isaac preferred Esau to Jacob because uh, I suppose maybe Esau was more of a manly man, a man's man. And uh, many fathers, uh, all like that type of person, actually every man, every male personage in some way or other as a hankering after um, masculinity and he likes to see this masculinity brought to fruition in his offspring. So Isaac naturally had a fancy, he had a, a, a greater love or preference for his son Esau, whereas their mother preferred Jacob. Uh, one time Esau went hunting and he turned back very uh, hungry and uh, he, he sold his birthright to Jacob for uh, some food. And this is also told to us in the Bible when um, uh, Jacob made him swear, give me, sell me my birthright and so uh, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. And this may be seen in Genesis 25 verse 33 onwards. And um, and this is uh, Isaac, the father of uh, Esau and Jacob, had been promised that he would receive the blessings promised to Abraham in Genesis 26, 3. And these blessings included being multiplied as the stars of the sky, and, and in this seed will all nations of the earth be blessed in Genesis 26, 4. This was part of the blessing. 
So this was an um, aspect of the blessing that, in effect, Esau, as the firstborn, sold or gave over to his brother Jacob. And uh, uh, Isaac had already been told that in his seed, meaning in only a portion of his seed, in one out of his two offspring would the uh, blessings devolve. So in this way, Jacob ensured that the blessing would devolve to him and not to his brother. And so that is the whole thing of uh, Genesis 25, 33 onwards concerning the selling or the selling by Aesop of, his birth, of the birthright to Jacob. After that to time, Isaac, the father of Jacob and Esau, felt that he, is, he was about to pass away. At the feeling that he was going to die, apparently he was very sick, and he wanted to bless his sons before he uh, departed. Uh, according to the uh, biblical chronology, this was actually some time before he actually did die. It was some time beforehand, but uh, apparently he, he had this feeling that he was uh, about to uh, depart from the world and he wanted to bless his sons. Uh, incidentally, my own grandfather had a similar feeling concerning my father and in the end um, my grandfather told him, my father that he had to prepare himself to carry on after him and uh, my father was uh, very uh, moved by this experience and in the end uh, my grandfather recovered from the sickness that had stricken him and he lived to be very old. He actually died at the age of 106 and he was quite healthy until his last days. So it just shows you that sometimes a person may think he is um, he's at the end of it and he has a long way to go. And, and apparently a similar experience occurred to Isaac and he called his sons and he told them that he was about to die. And first of all he called to Esau and he told him to uh, to uh, to go out and hunt a deer and bring it and prepare the food and bring it back to him and let him eat so that he might bless him. And uh, apparently this was this is uh, some type of a, a physical physical uh, material um, aspect of spirituality. We find this in the Bible. We find that uh, that uh, on the holidays a person should eat and drink and uh, be merry. And praise God that uh, we are allowed to combine physical aspects of existence with the spiritual ones. We are also actually encouraged to do so. On holy feast days when we praise God Almighty, we are also commanded to offer up sacrifices. And some of these sacrifices are eaten together with wine and good food, together with uh, the family of the person offering up the sacrifices. In other words, a person has to feel good, should feel good, should do good for himself, should do good for others, and he should dedicate this doing of goodness, this uh, self-satisfaction, as if to say this aspect of self-satisfaction that is necessary for his existence, he should dedicate it to God Almighty, and through this experience he may elevate himself to a great spiritual level. This is well known. And this is what Isaac intended. He intended that uh, Esau go out hunting a, a, a young deer, prepare the meat, he would eat the meat, he would feel good, he would be uh, strengthened and encouraged, and then he would be at an elevated level whereby he could impart the bit of blessing on his son, Esau. And so he told Esau to do this, to go out and prepare what was necessary. Uh, Rebecca, the mother of uh, both Esau and uh, Jacob, overheard the instructions of Isaac to Esau and she did not like it. She thought, or she knew actually, she knew by the gift of prophecy that she had, sometimes the women know things better than men concerning certain issues. Women have a certain natural intuition. Rebecca was a great woman. And uh, she had uh, this natural gift that many women have pos possessed as part of their femi femininity, as part of their being a woman. She had this in a greater measure and she was also uh, at a high spiritual level and she knew that the blessing should go to Jacob. So therefore she told Jacob to uh, dress himself up in skins and disguise himself as Esau and uh, go in with a, the flesh of a, of a goat that she would prepare and apparently the goat's flesh was similar to that of a deer and uh, pretend to be um, Esau 
men received the blessing from their father. And uh, apparently at that time, Isaac was blind, he could not see, and the two brothers were, were basically similar. I remember that they were twin brothers, and uh, she believed that this deception would work, and uh, it did work, as we shall see. Jacob did so. Jacob uh, did as the mother instructed. He went in, as we're told in Genesis 27, uh, verses 18, 19 and onwards. He went in and he received the blessing and Jacob received the blessing from Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. Isaac blessed Jacob that he should receive agricultural plenty and great blessings. The peoples and nations would serve him and recognize his suzerainty over them. And this includes the descendants of Esau, who would all bow down to him. His brother would dare bow down to him, as, Esau, as Isaac himself admitted. Whoever blesses him, that is the person being blessed, that is uh, Jacob. Whoever blesses him, seeks his welfare, and in good faith with him, would be blessed. And whosoever curses him, that is, seeks his harm, or wishes him harm, would be cursed. Genesis 27, verse 29. After receiving a blessing, Jacob went out. Esau returned from the hunt with what he had prepared, and he went in. He went in almost uh, sounds from the Bible, biblical uh, from the biblical account as if Esau went in just as Jacob came out, but just missed each other, so to speak. Jacob went, uh, and uh, Esau went in just as Jacob came out, and he told his father, he asked his father to bless him, and uh, his father was uh, frightened. Isaac was very afraid. He said, who was he who came in and, was, and asked for the blessing? And he shall be blessed. Isaac knew within him that the blessing that he had given was a true blessing, that he had been inspired by God Almighty to give the blessing, and the blessing would come on the person who received blessed, the blessing itself. He just wanted to know who it was who had received it. So then Esau realized that uh, Jacob had tricked him, that Jacob had, tri had taken the blessing from him and he cried out. And then Isaac affirmed, he confirmed, he, uh, he said that, uh, that uh, Jacob indeed would receive the blessing and he would be the greatest of the brothers and that his brother, his brothers of, of uh, Jacob would serve him, meaning uh, Esau and the others. And Jacob would receive the blessing, but nevertheless, Esau would also receive a blessing. Esau would live by his sword, he would be a warrior, and he would live in a fertile areas of the world. And indeed, the descendants of Edom have done so. They first lived in Rome, which is and in parts of Italy, and they also lived in Germany, which is a very fertile country in parts of Europe, and uh, possibly in Japan, and they were very often the ruling elites over different areas, also in Russia and different places. And they um, they too received a blessing. And they always struggled against the Israelite nations. And in the end times there will be a great war between Esau and Jacob. And at times uh, Edom or Esau, Edom is another name for Esau, Edom will prevail. But in the end Esau will be defeated will be defeated by Jacob and the sons of Jacob, including Joseph and the ten tribes of Israel. He, he sort of said this blessing may be seen in Genesis 27, 39. It is blessed that he should live by a sword, become a foremost military power throughout most of his national existence. See Genesis 27, 14. Times he would be dominated by Jacob, but other times he would manage to assert his independence and even get, have gained some control over, over, over Jacob. So we have to realize this. This, this is uh, mentioned in Genesis 27 and 14. We also know that uh, Esau intermarried with Canaanite women and Hittite women and with uh, Ishmael, meaning the Arabs. Uh, this uh, presage symbolized the future reunion or attempted uh, union that uh, the, the darker powers of Europe would att attempt to achieve with the Islamic uh, potentates and uh, Islamic powers who are symbolized by Ishmael, the forefather of the Arabs, and they will join together to fight against the Israelite nations. And for a time, this union of these might succeed in defeating us or in harming us, though eventually it will fall apart. And once again, the Israelites will be unable to assert themselves and to gain what belongs to them, what good almighty promise they would have in the Bible. 
Because Jacob had uh, tricked him, had uh, taken he, the blessing by subterfuge, Esau hated Jacob. Esau planned to kill Jacob, see Genesis 27, 41. So Jacob had to flee. So Jacob fled. He went to his father-in-law. Actually, he was not married at the time. He went to the man who was to become his father-in-law, the brother of his mother in the, what is now uh, northern areas of Syria and around the Haraim in that region and um, there he married the daughters of, of, of his uh, of the brother of his mother who became Laban who became his father-in-law he married the, the two daughters and also he married their two servant maidens yeah, and they altogether four wives and he had twelve sons and um, then he returned and uh, then he returned uh, when uh, 11 of the sons were born, when Joseph was born, he returned to Israel. Before, on his way into exile, before Jacob could, went, reached Syria, when he was still in the land of Israel, when he, but he was still passing out when he was fleeing on his way out of the land of Israel, he came to a region around uh, Jerusalem and then Beit, uh, connected with Beit El, in the north, uh, both, to both of these areas, and he uh, fell asleep and he saw a ladder. Ladder, and on this ladder, angels were going up and down, and God appeared to him, and God uh, uh, presented himself as the God of Abraham and Isaac, and he promised him that the land would be given unto him. He also promised him that his descendants would be numerous as the dust of the earth, and would spread to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all families of the earth will be blessed through him. See Genesis 28, 13, 14. Ultimately, Jacob was promised that he will return to the land. But before then, everything that had been promised about him must come to pass. I will not leave you until I have done to you that which I have spoken to you of. See Genesis 28, 15. In other words, the blessings had to come to fruition. And many, uh, and they, they mostly have come to fruition. On the material level, they have come to the fruition through the lost ten tribes, as we have explained, and as you will see. The blessings that have been promised to Isaac, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have come to fruition in the lost ten tribes. They have become, been a great mighty nation. They have uh, gained possessions to the north and to the west and to the south and to the east, to the land of Israel, as was promised. They have been a blessing to all peoples of the earth. They have uh, achieved great agricultural plenty. They have been a military might. They possess the gates of their enemies. And they have ruled in many nations. And uh, they have uh, been established themselves throughout all the seas and oceans of the world, as was promised. As, and these only are part of the blessings. But all the blessings taken together as one whole has been fulfilled in the West European nations, especially those who inhabit the British Isles and their offshoots in North America, Australia, New Z and New Zealand and related areas. And this was part of the blessing. Jacob was promised that God would fulfill everything that had been promised to him before he returns to the land. In other words, before his sons, his descendants, return to the land from their places of exile. As we said, Jacob continued, uh, he went to Laban, he went to the northern area where he was headed, and there he married Rachel and Leah, the two sisters, and together their maidservants Bilhah and Zilpah, and twelve sons were born unto him. From these sons come the twelve tribes of Israel. After which Jacob left Laban to come back to the land of Israel. And as he was returning, Esau, his brother Esau, his twin brother Esau, with four hundred men, came to meet him. and. Um, Jacob was afraid, he was afraid maybe Esau would be he was still angry, maybe Esau still wanted to kill him, which was the reason he had fled in the first place. So he split up his entourage, his whole his family into two separate camps. And uh, these two separate camps symbolize, possibly symbolize the future division of the Israelite nation into two different sections, Judah and and, ja and Israel, or Judah and Joseph that are mentioned throughout the prophets, throughout the prophetical work, we find references to these two different separate nations that will be separate throughout most of the exile, throughout most of their times of exile, of division, until they ultimately return to the land. And when they do return to the land in the end times, they will reunite, as we are told in the prophets, for instance, Ezekiel 37 speaks of the two sticks, the stick of Judah and his companions and the stick of 
Joseph, Ephraim and his companions and the two sticks will be joined together and they will become one stick and they will be ruled over by one king and descendant of David in the land of Israel. And the land of God of Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates will be divided between the twelve tribes of Israel. This is what the Bible tells us. We are now speaking about, about the interim period, the, the time before then, as the Bible tells us. So Jacob was on his way back to the land of Israel. He heard that Esau was coming with 400 men and he was afraid that Esau would do him harm, would do some damage or do some, some inflict some type of punishment upon him, upon his family. He split it, so he split everything, every, his whole encampment into two different sections. And he, um, he remained behind, he remained behind preparing the things, uh, preparing the camp. And suddenly he met a man, and this man wrestled with him until the morning. And he uh, physically wrestled with him. He had a fight with him. He was wrestling with him. And at some stage in this uh, struggle, Jacob realized that this person who, with whom he was wrestling was not a normal being. He was an angel, a supernatural being. And the struggle was something from the other world. He was fighting forces, spiritual forces, that would have an impact upon all of world history. And he overcame them. He managed to uh, at least uh, subdue or restrain the force the angel, the messenger from the God Almighty was fighting with him and he would not let him leave. He would not let him leave and the morning came until he blessed him, until this angel blessed him. Jacob refused to leave him be. So the angel blessed Jacob and he said that his name should be changed to Israel. Israel means a struggle with God and overcome or struggle with forces from uh, heaven and defeat them or be one with them so that uh, in this sense the descendants of Jacob were elevated to a higher level of existence and we explained in Genesis 32 28 and this was a blessing given to him, that he should power with God a man and be able to overcome. It's written there, black and white. It's not something that we uh, are just uh, imagining. It is written there in the Bible. Esau and Jacob, later after that, after that Esau and Jacob met together and they were reconciled. And then Esau kissed his brother Jacob and they hugged and kissed and uh, Jake, Esau said he had, uh, the, the, the circumstances had gone well with him. And he too had been blessed, and then he requested that, um, that Jacob accompany him on his way, on his journeying to his homeland in the region of Mount Sair. And Jacob um, uh, said no, he'd rather not, that he had uh, a had whole encampment with him, he had women and children, and they couldn't hurry, they would not be able to maintain the, the pace. So he requested that Esau go on alone and Jacob said he would come afterwards and uh, catch up with him. And, uh, he never did. The Saviour say this uh, is a promise that in the end times until Jacob will go to meet he saw in his homeland in Mount Sire and there will be a final reckoning between the two. And uh, the prophet spoke of this. So Jacob continued on and once again God Almighty appeared to Jacob and he confirmed once more that his name should be changed to Israel. Previously the name had been changed through the agency of an angel. Now it was God Almighty in person who came and appeared to Jacob and affirmed or confirmed this change of name. This uh, appellation was uh, moved, was uh, switched. Instead of Jacob, henceforth he would be known as Israel. See Genesis 35.10. Then God blessed him that he should be fruitful and multiply a nation and the company of nations, a kahal, a community of nations, would emerge from him and kings would descend from him, see Genesis 35, 11. And uh, later on, the blessings that were given to Jacob were to devolve, were to be given over to his children, to all of his twelve sons, were to receive a portion of these blessings that had been